The general title of these talks that I'm giving here is Mind Over Mind. And I'm going into all the various problems which have to do with the control of the mind. And so I might introduce what I'm going to say by saying it from different points of view. For example, if you're interested in communications, it will be the problem of feedback. Or if I may put it in theological terms, how does man follow the will of God if the will of man is perverse? The theologians say, uh, you cannot do this without having divine grace or the power to follow the will of God. How then do you get grace? Why is grace given to some and not to others? If I cannot follow the will of God by my own effort because my will is selfish, how will my will, which is selfish, be transformed into an unselfish will? If I cannot do it because I am already the selfish will, then grace must do it. If grace has not already done it, why not? Because I didn't accept it, but by definition I had no power to accept it because my will was selfish. Must I then become a Calvinist and say that only those people who are predestined to receive grace will be able to live the good life? Then we come back to the inadmissible position that people who live evil lives and do not get grace because they are not predestined to it out of the infinite wisdom of the Godhead, then God himself must be held responsible for their evil deeds. And so that is a nice little tangle. If I put this in uh, the language of Oriental philosophy and religion, it would be something like this. The Buddha said that wisdom must come only from the abandonment of selfish craving or desire. One who abandons that desire attains nirvana, which is supreme peace, liberation. Nirvana means, in Sanskrit, blow out. That is, exhale the breath. The opposite desire is to breathe in. Now, if you breathe in and hold it, you lose your breath. But if you breathe out, it comes back to you. So the principle here is, if you want life, don't cling to it. Let go. But the problem is, if I desire not to desire, is that not already desire? How can I desire not to desire? How can I surrender myself when myself is precisely an urge to hold on, to cling? to cling to life, to continue to survive. I can see rationally that by clinging to myself, I may strangle myself. I may be like a person who has a bad habit as a result of which he is committing suicide. And he knows that, but can't give it up because the means of death are so sweet. 